I hate cheaters. They're a blight in every gaming community, and they actually smell really, really good in real life. Now, these guys can be pretty infuriating to fight against sometimes because, well, they're playing unfairly. They hit shots that they wouldn't normally hit. They get kills that they wouldn't normally get. They know where you are when they shouldn't, and they also tend to be pretty toxic and insufferable. But after a while, you kind of get used to it. The cheaters themselves don't make you mad anymore. The frustrating thing becomes how difficult it can be to kick them from the game. Though STF2 players kind of have it better than most. Well, maybe not better, but the power lies in our hands most of the time. In games like Dead by Daylight, Apex Legends, and I assume Valorant, I don't know, I've never played it, the most you can do is report them, and as long as the devs of the game continue to do their job, the cheaters will be banned from playing forever. And if it's a game that you have to pay money for, that really sucks for the cheaters. However, in TF2, well, uh, you can report their Steam profile, but... But fear not, for there is a savior, a guardian angel that we can rely on. Oh, right. Okay, so it's not perfect, but Valve has done what they can barely even be bothered to do. Up until kinda, sorta, not really recently. Both teams weren't able to call a vote at the same time, so if there were bots on both teams, you kind of had to just take turns and it took forever. But now you don't gotta worry about that. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it's up to us as players to deal with the cheaters and bots that infest our lobbies. Which is why, as a TF2 player, this video is very important to me. And it's also very important to me that you, who I assume to be a fellow TF2 player, watch this video. Because I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that could be doing way more than you are when it comes to purging the robotic and pernicious vermin of the funny hat game. So please, dear God, I mean, dear algorithm, show this video to enough people who play TF2 for it to make a difference, please! Right, I think it's been like two minutes by now, so I can finally kick this bot. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Oh yeah. Vote. It's it's really not that hard to just glance down at your keyboard and locate the F1 key and press it. That being said, don't just vote yes on every single vote you see, because if everyone did that, then you'd end up with a bunch of innocent players getting kicked, which happens. Sorry. What's your net worth? What's your net worth, kid? Alright, I might have, I might have f***ed myself. And it shouldn't. So if you didn't see any bots prior to the vote being called, at the very least, press tab to see if the person being kicked is playing sniper. And at that point, if they're not a bot, well, they're still playing sniper, so. Okay, I'm gonna try to get through this bot section relatively quick so we can get straight to the meat of the video. But don't skip it, okay? I'm sure you feel like you know how to deal with bots by this point if you've been playing TF2 at all during the past two years or so. But I'm willing to bet you could still benefit from listening to these vote kick quick tips. And you can easily remember them with this little acronym I came up with. P for pay attention. Again, okay, not with that voice. But really though, pay attention. Like seriously, you can't kick a bot if you don't know that there is one. Glance at chat every now and then to see if people on the enemy team are telling you to kick your bot. If you see a sniper strolling around like this, that's a bot. Press tab when you're not doing anything else to look for any suspicious activity on the scoreboard. If there's a bot but you don't know what its name is, look at the kill feed, it'll tell you. When there is a bot in your match, all that matters is that you were able to recognize it, notice it, and figure out what its name is. And you can't do any of that if you don't PAY ATTENTION! E for easy going. If you identify a bot on the enemy team, relax, remain calm, and trust in your opponents to perform the courteous gesture of removing the bot from the game. Unless the enemy team looks like this, then I wouldn't really count on it. Just say in chat, hey, could you guys kick the bot on your team? 
followed by the name of the bot, because if they're not aware enough to notice that there's a bot in the first place, they're also probably stupid enough to say, who or what bot in chat when you just say kick bot, you know? Basically, just don't be toxic if the enemy team is a little slow on kicking their bot, okay? That's, that's it. Move on. N for names. Know the common bot names. They switch it up every once in a while, but there are often some usernames that you can immediately recognize to be bots. Which is good, because if you happen to glance at chat and see Does Hotter has joined the game, you can be ready to kick it as soon as it's finished loading in. However, remember that not all bots have the same names. Some of them are just your standard random TF2 player username. Alright, I'm not gonna do the voice for this one, because it's actually really important. I, for initiative. When there is a bot on your team, kick it. I understand that maybe you're in the middle of a firefight or whatever gameplay you could be busy with, but as soon as you get the chance, you should go to kick that bot. Don't think, oh, someone else will do it and I can just press F1. Because what if everyone else on your team is thinking the same thing? Take the initiative. In 1964, a woman named Kitty Genovese was raped and stabbed to death outside of her apartment building. It's said that dozens of people heard or witnessed it, but no one called or reported it to the police or tried to intervene because they all just assumed that someone else would do it. It may be an extreme comparison, but that's exactly the point. Calling a vote on a cheater in a video game is very simple and much more easy to do when compared to preventing a murder. So do it. Make a vote kick bind. Seriously. It can be a hassle to have to open up the menu and click the tiny vote button. Bind, the key you want to bind it to. Call vote. Do that. Kicking bots just got a whole lot easier. S for sniper. The joke is that the acronym spells out penis, in case you didn't get it. It's funny, because we're TF2 players and laugh at the same jokes literal second graders find funny. Not all bots play sniper. Every now and then, the bot hosts start feeling a little quirky and get their robotic army to go force a nature scout, direct hit soldier, heavy, or vac medic. Not really though, I don't have footage of it, but one time there was this demo man with the booties, a shield, and the ham, and I didn't realize that it was a bot until the game was about to end. And even then, my teammates were all like, no, we shouldn't kick him, he's just using the ham. But he literally had crit cheats, which allow you to get 100% guaranteed crits with your melee weapon at all times. So we should have kicked him, doesn't really matter, besides the point, whatever. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it. Keep all of this in mind, and I hope it helps you in your future endeavors. Not you try farfalon yamoroso, not to do. My buddy's gonna queue with me I won't kick it cause I'm a huge pussy I remember when I was wiped out a whole team Now no players can flag our med cause I'm walling I'll be waking up using cheese Okay, this section of the video is likely gonna be very long So in an effort to keep it somewhat coherent I'm gonna break it down into five steps And the way you carry out each of these steps Depends on whether or not you were on the cheater's team But to briefly go over them First you've got step one, suspicion This is the part where you take notice of someone in your game That appears to be a bit sussy then you've got step two evidence gathering which is exactly what it sounds like you want to search their profile for anything that would suggest they're cheating you want to watch their gameplay for any behaviors that might give them away things like that step three involves testing them in a way that might cause them to accidentally reveal themselves step four is making the call out and ideally getting them kicked from the game but if they don't get kicked from the game due to ignorant teammates or maybe they have their friends with them you can transition into step five which is either leaving the game yourself or doing what I do, which is a little something I like to call the long game. TM, trademark, put a, put a TM. Thanks, good. So strap in, cause I'm gonna take you through all of it, step by step, leaving no stone unturned, no nuance in the way cheaters behave left unexplained. So how does one go about detecting a cheater? Well, it's not really something you can always be on the lookout for, because that would distract from gameplay and make you start to feel like a paranoid schizophrenic. But there are definitely some things that you can take notice of, especially if you're playing against the cheater. So let's start there. Believe it or not, cheaters do not exclusively stick to sniper. Cheaters play every class. In fact, I would argue that cheating scouts, soldiers, and heavies are just as common as cheating snipers. Also, I just gotta quickly say that I'm speaking entirely from the experience I have with this game and the cheaters. Hello. Hey, hello. Uh, oh, great. I think I'm in. What's up, guys? Anonymous here. I'm a hacker. Just wanted to jump in and say, uh... Yeah, we don't claim these assholes. They're cheaters. Got it? Not hackers. Cheaters. 
You know that clip of XQC when he sees a cheetah on his screen and goes to call out its name like some sort of toddler learning the ABCs? Only to call it a goddamn cheeto instead because he's a fucking gigabrain ultra genius? It's like that. They're cheaters. Not like me. <laughs> I'm a hacker. I hack things. Like mainframes and government websites and TF2 YouTube videos and shit like that. Give me some credit, man. I've installed any cheating software in my life aside from like an auto clicker or something. So, um, just keep that in mind. The most well known cheat in not only TF2, but just about every multiplayer shooter is Aimbot. Now, there's a bunch of different types of Aimbots that go by a lot of different names. But the one I'm talking about is when the cheater's crosshair just snaps onto the nearest target when they fire. This is pretty easy to spot when spectating a cheater, and also something you can look out for during a gameplay interaction with a cheater, but can sometimes be tough to notice if their aim is already close enough to their target. In this clip we have a heavy with a very blatant aim lock that actually gives itself away for being way too indecisive on who it should target. I managed to escape him at first, but die to him just moments later due to the crits creak up his ass before getting queued right into another match. As someone who actually plays a fair amount of heavy, having twitchy and spazzy aim like this is actually sort of normal, but not at this level, where he's rapidly swapping between shooting me and some other random player that I can't see, and still hitting his shots. This specific kind of aimbot is most noticeable on scouts, heavies, snipers, and engineers. Yes, engineers. People cheat as engineer, and I'm tired of pretending they don't. I once had a specific encounter with a cheating engineer on my team that I couldn't kick because my team wouldn't even entertain the possibility that someone playing engineer would ever cheat. Hey guys, I'm pretty sure this engineer on our team with the Widowmaker, a gun that basically has no downsides if you never miss with it, making it great for someone with a cheating software that ensures they never miss, is like 100% blatantly cheating. No dude, he's playing engineer. Why would someone who's cheating ever in a million years play engineer on a 2 fort server? <laughs> that is why. The fact that you just asked that question is the exact reason why. It's not obvious. By playing engineer with an aimbot and everything, this allows the cheater to cheat very blatantly without being noticed by the average TF2 player because he's not playing sniper and spinning around in circles. That is why some cheaters play engineer. That is why some cheaters play fat scout. That is why some cheaters play medic for fuck's sake. And you might be thinking like, oh, but if they're cheating as medic, how much can they even do? Is it even something I need to worry about at that point? Yes, yes it is, it really is. And we'll come back to that later. The point is, for now, now, if you see any sussy activity from a scout, heavy, sniper, engineer, fat scout, or gun spy, aimbot is one of the cheats you want to look out for. However, it is not the only cheat that you want to look out for because there are some more that are perhaps less well known, but used and applied by cheaters on each and every class. Wall hacks. No matter what multiplayer game it is, being able to see your opponents as well as your teammates through walls at any time on the map is very, very valuable and would make any game that much easier. In TF2, wall hacks can sometimes be a bit trickier to spot compared to something like an aimbot, and it's typically not something that you can pick up on right away, but if there's someone on the enemy team that seems to always be ready for whatever is around the corner, or if he always seems to be expecting you no matter what route you take, that is something that may warrant the arousal of some suspicion. So if there's a guy on the enemy team that never seems to be taken by surprise or gets a shot on you the millisecond you exit cover, be aware that he may have wall hacks. Now it's a common misconception that playing cloak and dagger spy is a surefire way to determine whether or not someone is cheating. The hypothesis goes something like this. Okay, this player might have wall hacks, meaning he sees everyone on the map at all times from any location. Well, that means if I go spy, toggle my invisibility and stand right here in his sight line, he will shoot me. And if he doesn't, that clears him of suspicion beyond the shadow of a doubt. And back in the day, yeah, that kind of worked. But cheaters are smarter now, and the vast majority of them configure their cheats in a way that prevents them from shooting spies that they shouldn't be able to see for the exact reason to avoid being suspicious. Cheaters these days aren't stupid and will often do everything they can to avoid being 100% blatant. A lot of them still cheat very blatantly, but not to the point where an average TF2 player will be on the shadow of a doubt think, this guy's definitely cheating, you know? Anyway, 
While hacks are used in some capacity by just about every cheater, some will toggle them off to seem more legit, and because they might think, eh, I don't need aimbot and wall hacks to stomp the enemy, or vice versa. But generally, wall hacks are utilized on every single class, much like the next two cheats we're gonna go over. Crit hacks exist. If you didn't know that, Great, now you do. Now there's some weird nuance to how this type of cheat works by manipulating TF2's code or whatever, but that's the stuff you only really need to know if you're someone that's using this cheat. But for someone trying to spot a cheater, this is all you really need to know. So random crits on melee weapons work differently than random crits on secondary and primary weapons. Melee weapons crit more often because they have a 15-60% to 60 chance to crit depending on how much damage you've done in the last 20 seconds, while other weapons have a 2-12% to 12 chance depending on the same variable. With crit hacks, you can force 100% guaranteed crits on melee weapons at all times given it's a weapon that can get random crits, and you can significantly increase the rate on other weapons. Not to 100%, but to a point where you start to get into the territory of Minecraft speedrunner odds. But how do you spot these in-game? Well, it depends. If it's one of these classes, you'll notice that they get random crits on their primary weapons very, very often, which you might see by getting killed by them yourself over and over again, watching multiple of your teammates get deleted by them frequently, or if you're already onto them, you might want to start just glancing at the kill feed for their name to start subconsciously comparing the amount of critical kills they get to the amount of non-crit kills they get. But also, make sure it's not just the crits Krieg. If someone is getting a suspiciously high amount of random crits across an extended period of time, that's enough to look into it. And it's very important that it is across an extended period of time. If someone just gets two to three crockets in a row, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. I mean, there's literally an achievement for that that one-fifth of anyone who's ever played TF F2 has. I apologize for the quality of this clip, but it shows off some blatant crit cheats in action. This cheating soldier walks straight into our courtyard and deletes one of my teammates before getting two crits in a row. Then he dies like an idiot. Not even 60 seconds later, he comes right back and fires off two more random crits in quick succession while also hitting some pretty impressive shots thanks to another cheat we'll get to here in a second. Now these three classes are kind of a different story. When it comes to cheating medics, crit hacks on their melee weapon is one of the few things you can even notice from them. And medics are notorious for getting a lot of melee crits anyway. So here's what I'll say. If you, for whatever reason, believe that the enemy medic is cheating just off a gut feeling or if his points are suspiciously high, try to engage him in melee combat. If he crits you every single time, he's probably crit hacking. In fact, you should do the same for snipers. A cheating sniper will be more obvious anyway, but if you really need something to confirm it for you, it might just be this. Though this would be a good time to tell you, smart cheaters will not melee crit you if they don't have to. If they're confident enough in coming up behind you or something, or if you're low enough health to die without being crit, they will intentionally avoid forcing a melee crit to avoid suspicion. So just keep that in mind. If you think someone's cheating, but they get a non-crit melee kill, they are not in the clear just yet. Then you've got Spy, who you don't really have to worry about too much when it comes to crit hacks, since Spy's melee cannot random crit. And a lot of cheating spies, not all of them, but a lot of them, will use the Ambassador, which also cannot random crit. But if he's using the Revolver or Latranger, the same goes for him as with these guys. Here's a clip of a player demonstrating all three of these cheats at once, twice in a row. By this point, I knew there was a cheater in the match, and I knew that they were somewhere around this area, so I was really just looking to get footage exactly like this for the video as I walk over here. Lo and behold, Chaco pops out from around the corner and insta-kills me with a crit while displaying inhuman reaction time. It could be argued that he knew I was there because I used a voice command just moments earlier, but if you actually believe that this guy is legit after this next clip, you are the reason I'm making this video. Same guy, like a minute later, shows up out of nowhere and double taps me within seconds. And oh look, he got a crit again. How odd. I mean, look at this. He somehow isn't even visible when he shoots me for the second time here. That's not human skill, and this guy is not legit. All right, next cheat. So you've heard of bee hopping before, right? You probably have, and if you haven't, I'm not gonna explain it to you. You can bee hop in TF2, 
it's just difficult. And it's very, very difficult to do consistently and to chain them together. However, you can make it easier by binding jump to your mouse wheel. And if you're really desperate, you can make it effortless if you set up some sort of script and or download cheats. If someone in your match is b-hopping a lot, doing it very well and very consistently, they could be cheating, but they could also just be pretty good and pretty lucky. Either way, you probably want to look into it. I sadly don't have any footage of this, but recently me and my friends were playing a match of Badwater. The enemy pyro hit a sus reflect, which caused me to suspect them. Eventually, they got auto-balanced to our team, so I decided to spectate them. The strange part is that I was 100% confident that they were cheating because of how they were b-hopping around, but they also played like shit. They would b-hop into a group of enemies, throw down the gas passer, and then immediately die. If they hadn't hit that initial reflect on me, I never would have caught them because of how shit they played. So Silent Aim is a cheat that used to work for hitscan weapons, but was patched a while ago to now only work for projectile weapons. Cheaters that have silent aim will typically be using any of soldiers' primaries, most demoman weapons, flare guns, syringe guns, the crossbow, the huntsman, etc. Once again, this one can be tough to spot depending on how blatant they are with it. If you see a soldier or demoman or anything like that shoot at you when they are not aiming at you, that's silent aim. It's a cheat that lets cheaters shoot projectiles in a direction they're not aiming, without their aim actually snapping at all like it would if they were using hitscan. Here's a clip. This is a cheating demo man. The way he kills me here is very subtle, but if you look closely, he's not aiming at me. He was close, but his grenade should have went more in this direction rather than straight at my balls. If you think maybe this is just TF2 being weird and I'm salty over this kill for no reason, this guy, and at least one other person on his team, went full blatant cheater as sniper later in the round. Anyone I feature in this video that I refer to as a cheater or that I imply is a cheater, I am 1 billion percent sure that they cheat, even if I don't show the full context. So just trust me. If their username is redacted, it's because I'm less than 1 billion percent sure they're a cheater. Their name is, a. Uh inappropriate, or because I'm 1 trillion percent sure that they cheat for attention and would love to be featured in my video. But just in case, if you're in this video and I use you as a cheater example, but you aren't a cheater, reach out to me and we'll try to get it sorted out. Beyond that, this cheat can be nearly impossible to detect unless you're spectating the cheater, or if the cheater tries to shoot at your teammate while very obviously aiming at them, but for whatever reason, their software decides to shoot at you instead. Just like in this low quality clip from before with Josh the direct his soldier. Instead of focusing on how many crits he gets, let's take a look at where he's aiming and what he hits. Now we can't actually see him when he gets this kill on the scout, but the scout is moving quickly and jumping around like scouts do, so it's a considerably impressive shot. Then when he moves in, my pyro buddy here goes after him. At this point, Josh and his spy friend are in danger of being burnt to a crisp. This pyro is actually threatening Josh's life. So what should Josh do? Shoot the pyro to prevent himself from dying. And that's what he tries to do. But Josh's shitty silent aim that he wasted his neglectful mother's money on sees me and thinks, ooh, a spy, let's crit him. So he fires off a shot in a direction that he's not aiming at, and it just barely misses me. But then his silent aim goes, oh wait, never mind, and deletes the pyro. I don't even think Josh saw me in this clip, despite having fired at me and looking directly at me right here. Once again, he comes back and works his Lamau box magic on our engineer and pyro. But then when he goes to shoot at the sentry behind me, his silent aim sees that the pyro is about to come back down and deviates just enough to turn the pyro to dust. Then he dies like an idiot again, because he really sucks at this game. So those are more or less all the general cheats that I'm aware of. So let's move on to the ones that are more niche or class specific. The force of nature has an attack interval of 0.3125 seconds. This means that a human player has to wait 0.3125 seconds after firing the first shot before being able to fire the second. There is a cheat called double tap that is for whatever reason able to completely bypass this attack interval, firing both shots at once. Inexperienced players that don't know how the weapon works or the specific damage numbers may turn a blind eye to this when being one shot by a weapon that can't one shot them as they think it's just a feature of the game. Do you guys like my Shunik impression? If you get one shot by the force of nature when you have more than 115 health and there weren't any vulnerabilities or crits in play or anything, the player that killed you is 100% without a doubt unless you were mistaken in what you saw cheating. There isn't really a class specific cheat to soldier, but it should be noted that they like to use the direct hit 
as the increased rocket speed pairs well with their silent aim. I would argue that Pyro is actually the least commonly played class by cheaters, and I don't know why that is. Maybe it's just more difficult for me to spot. Pyros will use aimbot, and many of them have an auto reflect, which is also quite difficult to spot unless they reflect a rocket that they literally had no way of anticipating, or a projectile that's rather tough to deflect. Despite what many pyro enthusiasts will have you believe, doing this isn't that difficult or impressive. So just because someone does this multiple times per game doesn't really mean anything, unfortunately, as it can be pulled off with a bit of prediction, luck, and also this. Most demomen can just use silent aim and get away with it, as it's very tricky to spot on a demoman unless you're spectating him, so you may have to look out for impossible game sense or crit hacks. But some demos have an automatic sticky detonation sheet that will will automatically detonate stickies when someone is within their blast radius. Sometimes people get lucky, but if they do it even twice, that's sus! Cheating heavies will just use aimbot, crit hacks, and wall hacks, and often have a pocket medic. Whether that pocket medic is an accomplice or just an innocent bystander caught up in a crime that they have no idea they're helping commit is for you to figure out later on. Unrelated, but I feel like this would be a good time to bring up that 95% of cheaters always have a killstreak weapon equipped. Obviously, this doesn't mean that any player with a killstreak is automatically suspect, but it's something to look out for if you're on to someone for a separate reason. Cheating engineers will function pretty similarly to cheating scouts, running around and shooting people with aimbot, crit hacking, wall hacking, the usual. They like to use the Widowmaker though because they can't miss, and the Widowmaker is essentially absent and downside if you don't miss with it. Cheating medics are 99.9% .9 of the time just pocketing their boyfriend who's also a cheater, this isn't to say without their pocket a cheating medic is nothing, as they still have silent aim, crit hacks, and wall hacks to rely on, which would serve anyone very, very well. It should be noted that snipers like to utilize different types of aimbot that can be extra difficult to spot in-game. Triggerbot and slow aim are the two that I'm familiar with thanks to this video by Maxbox, and as far as I'm concerned there's no reliable way to spot someone using these types of aimbots unless you're spectating them. So I might talk about it more there when we get to that section of the video. The main cheats that spies will use involve ping manipulation, interping, paired with some sort of cheat that will instantly backstab someone when possible, similar to trigger bot that snipers will use, but for backstabs. CL interp used to be something that anyone could do, and I could be wrong here, but I'm now fairly certain that you have to be cheating in some way to do it, but if you ask me, you should be kicked for doing it either way. There's also another cheat that's not really used by spies, but against them. An anti-backstab cheat, showcased in this old video by Mr. Paladin. I've barely experienced it myself and know very little about it, I just know that it exists and would like to share that knowledge with you in case you didn't already know. So if you're playing against a cheater, it should be reasonably easy to notice depending on what class they're playing. But if you're on the cheater's team, the hard part is taking notice while the easy part is confirming your suspicions. So I'm going to quickly go down a list of characteristics or just things that you can take notice of when it comes to people on your team that when I see, I think, that's enough for me to look into this person, you know? Like, I don't see these things and think, cheater for sure, just... This doesn't really prove anything at all, but it's a reason to take a closer look. Absurdly high score compared to the rest of the players in the server. Absurdly high crit rate. Racist, homophobic, transphobic, sexist, or just generally toxic weapon names, as well as racist, homophobic, transphobic, sexist, or just generally toxic behavior in chat. Members of the enemy team calling them out or expressing suspicion. Consistently high kill streaks and mention of anything related to these terms. HVH stands for Hacker vs. Hacker. Nitro, Region, Nullcor, and Lamaubox are the name of cheating softwares. Now if you're following the P in penis by paying attention, you can notice these things, and if you skipped the bot section, that probably sounded really, really strange out of context. The point is, Keep an eye on your teammates. Be observant. Being observant is really important here, okay? Now once you observe this cheater-like behavior, you have a job to do. If you're as passionate about this as I am, I need you to do this for me. If you play TF2 on a regular basis, boot it up right now and type this into the console. Bind, M wheel up, extend freeze. What this will do is make it so that every time you scroll your mouse up, you'll run this command through the console. And what this command does is extend your respawn time. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, if you play on community servers, or if you've been around long enough, you'll know that there's actually a secret third team. Not, no, not that one. A secret third team hidden within the team selection screen. Team Spectator. Where you just watch. I know, it sounds kind of boring, 
but the ability to spectate is invaluable when it comes to sniffing out cheaters, because pointing out an aimbot is a lot easier when you're peering through the eyes of the aimbotter, but unfortunately, this spectator team got removed from casual mode at some point, and teams are just auto-assigned now. But this command semi-solves that issue, allowing you to spectate anyone on your team as long as you want. As long as you continue to scroll up. And this is where we transition into step two, evidence gathering. Now, of course, if you're on their team, you're going to want to try to spectate them. But before you do that, check their profile. Press Shift-Tab and click on view players. Search for them by name. If you can't find them, go to the recent games tab and search for them there, since they may be appearing offline. If you still can't find them, check their in-game profile picture. If you do find them and see that their name on their profile is different from their name in-game, that's a telltale sign of a cheater. Listen, I don't know how they do it, but there's a way to make your in-game name different from your profile name. There might be a way to do it without using malicious cheats in TF2, but I've just never seen someone that isn't a cheater do this. So that would be your first piece of evidence if you run into that. And it's a pretty strong piece of evidence, right? Because when scouring someone's profile that you suspect may be cheating, there's weak evidence and there's strong evidence. And you can use this evidence to further or confirm your own suspicions as well as present it to others in the match when you go to make the call out. The next thing you might run into is a private profile. Now a private profile doesn't really mean anything, but when I suspect someone of cheating and I see that they have a private profile, I consider that evidence, and I will likely bring that up later on when accusing them. It is something that they could reasonably explain, but that's why you should always gather more evidence than just private profile equals cheater. And if you literally can't, then they're probably not cheating to begin with. But if their profile isn't private, here's what you can look for that may indicate cheating. Relatively weak evidence would include a comment calling them out, offensive, insensitive, not safe for work, or just out of pocket content as their name, profile picture, or just anywhere on their profile. 100% achievement progress on TF2. A new account. This may indicate that they're playing on an alt, which cheaters do. And this last one's gonna sound like a joke, but I'm dead fucking serious when I say this. CSGO in their recent activity. I'm not sure whether or not I need to explain myself on that one. As well as a number of other things that require more than a passing glance to pick up on and aren't really worth mentioning in the first place. Strong evidence would include multiple comments calling them out. Anything on their profile that references cheating or hacking, even if it's just a line in their bio that says, Why people accusate me so much? I know cheat! A VAC ban or a game ban. And there is a difference. To my understanding, a game ban is given to a player by the developers of a game when that player engages in any sussy activity. It could be using an exploit in Unturned. It could be for harassing streamers in Dead by Daylight. Cheating in Undertale. I don't know, maybe you pissed off Toby Fox. Just for any Steam game, really. Whereas a VAC ban is more or less confined to Valve games. I think you can still get a game ban from CSGO, depending on the circumstances, but if you get caught cheating by Gabe Newell himself in Left 4 Dead 2, TF2, Dota, Dota 2, Day of Defeat probably. You get a nice shiny VAC badge on your profile, and if you get banned for cheating in CSGO, you can still play TF2 for some reason. Listen, if you have a game ban, you can explain it away reasonably enough, but I'm still gonna be on your case, alright pal? A VAC ban on the other hand, I don't care if it was 5 days ago or 6,000 days ago. I am kicking you from the game out of principle. If you receive a VAC ban on your account, you should never be allowed to play any Valve game ever again. Because otherwise, what's the point of the VAC system anyway? And after all, once a cheater, always a cheater. Once a cheater, always a cheater. That's what you sound like right now. That's what you sound like right now. Okay, that's not necessarily true, but I'm gonna say it if I happen to develop a suspicion of you and happen to end up searching your profile and you happen to have a game ban or a VAC ban. Does that make sense? Once a cheater, always a cheater is true for most cheaters, but when it's not, it's at least once a cheater, never to be fully trusted again. I suggest you all follow that principle as well, but I don't know, it's your life. You do you, I guess. So if it's a VAC ban, that's enough evidence to make the call out, and we'll get into the intricacies and nuances of that when covering step four, but if it's anything other than a VAC ban, you're gonna want at least one gameplay observation or interaction with them that's indicative of cheating before moving forward. Perhaps more than one, depending on how strong or weak the evidence you gathered from their profile is. So now you're gonna want to spectate them using the extend freeze bind you set earlier. Now you would think Think that now I'm gonna teach you how to spot cheats from a first-person perspective and yeah I mean I will 
Aimbot looks like this, with the twitchy, quirked up aim snapping to targets. Slow aim and trigger bot is tougher and less reliable to spot. Wall hackers will be looking in odd directions, pre-aiming and watching players through walls. Silent aim is much easier to spot from a first person perspective, and it should become quickly apparent whether or not the person you are spectating is using crit hacks. Whatever, I think you get the idea, I probably don't even need to be telling you this. Here's the really important info. The vast majority of cheaters know when they are being spectated. When you do this spectating trick with extend freeze and get your respawn time up to like 60 or 100 or even 200 seconds, your teammates can see that right up here, but who the fuck is ever gonna look up here and take notice of that? Now very rarely, you might get some innocent bystander who sees it and thinks, what the fuck? This guy isn't gonna respawn for another 10 years. How is he supposed to contribute to the team? Let's get him out of here. And you might get kicked, but I'm gonna tell you how things usually go from my experience. If I start spectating someone because I think they might be cheating based on some crazy moment they pulled off or their score, or any of these things that I listed earlier, but check their profile and find weak evidence or no evidence to support the claim that they're cheating, one of two things happen. They either expose themselves as a cheater to me relatively quickly, or I stop spectating them after watching them do non-cheater things, because I just don't have any solid reason to keep telling myself that they're cheating while being unable to prove to myself that they're cheating. But if I start spectating someone because I think they're cheating and check their profile to see evidence that really strengthens my belief that they're cheating to the point where I'm almost 100% confident, I will just not stop spectating them, even if they go on to display non-cheater gameplay for over 10 minutes, 20 minutes even. If my belief is strong enough, I will keep watching them. Now sometimes this results in me eventually going, okay, maybe I'm just an insane person and this dude isn't cheating and I just wasted a half an hour of my life for no reason. But let me tell you something, and this is where we enter step three. Actual cheaters cannot fucking stand it when you spectate them for an extended period of time. Now, I don't know exactly how it works for them, but I imagine their cheating software is the thing that tells them like, hey, this guy's spectating you right now, which makes them think, okay, I better pretend to be legit for a moment until this spectator responds. But then eventually they realize. So clearly this guy is onto me and wants to spectate me in hopes of confirming his suspicions that I'm a cheater. I just gotta keep playing legit for a while longer and eventually he'll give up. And when I don't, they say to themselves, God damn it, man, what the fuck? This guy has been spectating me all match. I keep dying because I'm shit at this game without my instant win buttons, and they get really fucking annoyed. Now here's what a true dumbass does in this situation, very eloquently demonstrated by Mr. Pizza Hut Dude 2001. This guy wasn't trying to be subtle or hide his cheats at all. He was very blatant the whole time. I was just holding off on calling him out and kicking him because I wanted to get some footage of a cheating demo man. But eventually he says in chat, can this ninja stop spectating me? To which I respond in voice chat be spectating you you know sort of trying to play dumb to get him to be more specific and then he says oh they stopped because i did stop because he died but then he uses a melee aimbot on a spy how fucking shit at this game do you have to be to need an aimbot for your melee swings holy fuck so then i say but you said someone was spectating you how do you know when someone is spectating you you can't see that He's starting to realize that maybe he fucked up and says, No, it's because I think they are spectating. Because they keep dying, but yeah, makes zero sense. So I say, But what makes you think someone was spectating you? What's so special about you that would make someone want to spectate you? Because someone accused me in chat, and they want to check it out. Accused you of what? Still playing dumb. I don't know, they said I was cheating. Do you think it's because you're just very blatantly cheating? Could that be it? Can we kick this guy? He's cheating really blatantly. Everyone F1, please. That was satisfying. Yeah, I know it was just a friendly two fort server, so I'm not exactly saving the world or anything with that one, but it's always a delight to watch some dipshit cheater completely helpless as they get kicked from the match. There'll be a lot more of that later on. But first, let's take a look at what a slightly less idiotic cheater does. Now, first off, this is my pal Dawes. He streams TF2 as well as other games on Twitch. One day, Dawes decided to stream some TF2 and I decided to join him. Not too long into the stream, we join a game of Upward in which I immediately take notice 
notice of something. A name of a player that I think I might have recognized to be the name of someone who might be a cheater. Yeah, not the most solid grounds for an accusation, nor a good reason for me to even suspect this person at all. I decided to go check their profile just in case, but I'm unable to find it. It's not showing up in this little recent players menu. And I know that there's a different way to check profiles, but I don't bother with it for a number of reasons, don't ask me. But the fact that it wasn't showing up immediately made me like five times more suspicious of this guy. But I chose to just play normally without really checking him out. I was keeping an eye on his score though, and nearly halfway through the game, I thought, he is actually doing pretty well. Maybe I should spectate him. So I do that, and teach Dawes how to do it as well. I, they said to spam it, I didn't really it. <laughs> Dawes, Dawes just isn't going to respond. And as we're watching him, we slowly became more and more confident that he was cheating. But it was rather subtle. We couldn't really point to a specific moment that proves he cheats beyond a shadow of a doubt. But that's what we were waiting for. However, before we could see any of that from him, this happened. Why do you have two people on our team that are just like dead and spawn right now? What the fuck's going on? Yeah. People are just like not responding. And they stay at the same depth like the entire game. What do you say to this? Great question, Dawes. Let me break down what just occurred. We're gonna call this blurred out name guy Phil from now on. So Phil is a cheater, and he knows that Dawes and I are spectating him. So he calls us out to make it known to the server that we're essentially dead weight to the team because we haven't spawned in for the last 10 minutes or so. Now this fella, Dirk, who I'm not blurring the name of, hopefully so Phil gets jealous that his shitty friend no one cares about got in the YouTube video while he himself didn't. Maybe they fight over it and I can ruin a cheater friendship. Anyway, this guy Dirk immediately backs fill up with a yeah. which causes me to realize that they are friends and therefore that Dirk is also very likely a cheater considering his place on the scoreboard and as much as I'd like to go check his profile to see what I can find I am now forced to respond to this or I'm probably gonna get kicked. At this point, I know that Phil is a cheater and he knows that I know he's a cheater and I know that he knows that I know he's a cheater, but whether or not he knows that I know that he knows that I know he's a cheater is up for debate, you following? The cat's out of the bag between the two of us. Now we're sort of just racing to convince the rest of the server to kick the other party. Dawes and me versus Phil and Dirk. I do panic a little bit when I find out that there's more than one scumbag we're gonna have to deal with, so I respond like this. Sorry, I'm here, what's up? Sorry, I was just looking for your profile. Yeah, I was just looking for your profile, and I can't find it anywhere. But I did notice that there's someone... Yeah, I just can't find your profile anywhere. I don't know what's up with that. Here, I'll, I'll put my, my profile link in chat for you. Great. Now, I'm not exactly sure what he's thinking here, but I'm gonna use this as an example as to why you don't lead with, ah, you're cheating, we need to kick you, and instead you start with the reason you suspect someone of cheating and see what happens. And don't just say, I think you may be cheating because you look through walls a lot. Say something like, I notice that you seem like you're staring through walls a lot. What's up with that? It's a non-accusatory accusation. We'll come back to that later, but because I just told this guy I was having trouble finding his profile, which is what made me originally suspect him, he responds in what seems to be a kind, understanding way. Perhaps he didn't want to come off as defensive and combative in front of the other players in the server. Maybe he actually thought I was a fellow cheater and wanted to friend him. Doesn't really matter what's going through his head here. What matters is that he sent his profile. And he has a vac pad. Thanks for sending it. He has a vac pad. Alright. He does. Oh, oh shit. Like you should point it out. Is at this point I decide to check Dirk's profile and see that he also has a vac ban, but the round ends before we get the chance to do anything about it. There was another round after that where something went down, but once again, you're gonna have to wait till step four before you get to see that. So that's a good way of testing them if you're on their team. You just spectate them and see if they eventually lose their fucking mind and snap. This doesn't always work out though. This player with a vulgar name was hitting a lot of headshots. So I go to spectate them, and suddenly they're not hitting a lot of headshots anymore. Peculiar. Eventually, I get auto-balanced, and they start hitting a bunch of headshots again. I was fairly certain that this person was cheating because of that, but I couldn't really do anything about it at this point, which is fine. Sometimes you take L's. 
How do you test a suspected cheater that you're playing against? There's a way, it's just much less reliable and you can never really expect one specific result. There is this very strange thing that cheaters do to communicate with each other. When two cheaters find themselves in a match together and they know that each other are cheating, each time one of them kills the other, they'll type a number in chat. That number being how many times they've killed the other cheater. Now if this video does really well and gets viewed by a sizable portion of the community like I hope it does, this method is going to become even less reliable because more legit players are going to know about this cheater kill counter thing. But you know, maybe this video flops and gets no views, which would be really disappointing man, I worked hard on this. But in that case, if you do suspect someone of cheating and you want to test them, try to kill them and then when you do, type 1 in chat. The way they react to this could be very telling, but it could also mean literally nothing. Maybe they start to focus you more and respond with a one of their own when they kill you. That could be a pretty good reason to confirm your suspicions, but I don't know. Maybe they'll just say nothing and you learn nothing. Maybe they act confused. Maybe they really are confused. Don't expect this to give you anything to work with. Just know that maybe it might. And now... Finally, we may move on to step four, making the call out. Sometimes this step is very simple and straightforward. The enemy team's top player in this clip, Yuffie, has a VAC ban as well as multiple game bans. The round is coming to an end, so I say in chat, Yuffie's got a quirky little VAC ban. And that's really as much as we can do right here. Their team is too busy rolling us to pay attention to chat, so the culprit never actually got kicked, but we made the call out. Here's another example of the same thing, calling out a cheater on the enemy team. I point out that he has a VAC ban, get no acknowledgement. Starting to get a little frustrated, so I reiterate in all caps. Nerd sauce backs me up. And finally, we get a response. I don't know if he is. Please, for the love of God, do not be like this guy. It's not a question of whether or not he is. He has a VAC ban and he's top scoring. You can check the profile yourself to verify this. Then the cheater throws his hat into the ring in an attempt to defend himself. How am I playing then? That's a fucking brilliant question, man. I have no clue why Valve allows players that have been VAC banned for cheating to just continue playing whenever they want. It's fucking stupid. It's a worthless anti-cheat. But that's what the vote kick system is for. Anyway, that was really the end of it. We couldn't convince anyone on blue team to take us seriously, so this scumbag continued to cheat uncontested. Let's take a look at one that went kind of well. Here I am spectating this guy with a strange European name that I don't know how to pronounce, but he was actually not cheating. I was only spectating him because I saw that he had horrible game sense and acted like he was was new to the game, but hit a really crazy shot earlier in the match. As I'm starting to realize that I'm just paranoid and this fella's innocent, I find myself spectating this dude, KMS, just out of coincidence, and immediately pick up on the fact that he's using some pretty blatant silent aim and wall hacks. Check his profile, he is a VAC ban. So I say this in voice chat. Yo, KMS is hitting some pretty crazy shots and aiming at players. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what colors are Tom Bombadil? I was I was just gonna say that KMS looks like he's using silent aim. He's aiming at players through walls, gets a lot of crits, and he's a VAC ban on his profile, so I think we should kick him. I would have to concur. Nerd Sauce calls the vote for the team, and it actually gets pretty close, which makes sense. To me, I've been watching this player cheat blatantly from their perspective for a few minutes. But to a good handful of players on the server, this vote kick is very sudden and they're not entirely sure what it's about, so it's understandable why a number of players hit F2. When this happens though, it's advised to just encourage them to take your side in voice chat. Say to them, come on guys, F1, this guy's very blatantly cheating, he's got a vacuum on his profile. It looks like he would have been out of there anyways, but some verbal encouragement is always nice, just in case. Now that guy, KMS, he was easy pickings. You know why? Number one. He didn't speak in voice chat, making it tougher for the team to pick up on anything he has to say in defense of himself. And number two, he was alone. No cheater friends to back him up as far as we know. But if we go back to our buddies Phil and Dirk over here, you'll see that the exact opposite is true, meaning this callout is going to be a bit more challenging. The next round is upon us. As we established earlier, I know that Phil is a cheater, and he knows that I know he's a cheater, and I know that he knows that I know he's a cheater, but whether or not he knows that I know that he knows that I know he's a cheater is up for debate, right? So I play a single life as heavy, die, then decide, you know what, let's just go for it. Just a bit of fun trivia for the team. Two of our players, and Dirk, are cheaters. Both of them have vac bans, and we need to kick them from the game right now. That's not a vac ban? Dude, you know the... 
this thing? Oh yeah, thanks for reminding me. I wanted to bring that up. My boy Mega Scatterbomb came out of nowhere with this cheater database thing a couple months ago, and it looks promising. I won't be able to explain it better than he can for those of you who would take interest in it. So when you're finished watching this video, go watch his series, all about that. He's got a team of people working really hard on it, and I think it could make a considerable difference in regards to this cheater problem. I'm sorry, Dirk, what were you saying? Dude, you know the mega cheater database thing? I am not on there. Right. Because it's managed by people that live in Australia? This is a Virginia server, of course they're not fucking on there. And what a shitty defense too, even if this was an Aussie server. It's like saying, yeah, I know you just watched me kill that guy, but the police aren't searching for me by name as of right now, so how could I possibly be a murderer? Maybe come up with a better alibi, dipshit Dirk. F1, he's cheating and he has a backbend on his profile. I love it. You have a Do you hear the panic? Yeah, Damn. Cool. If you have a vac ban on your profile, you shouldn't be able to play any Valve game ever again. Why? That's not what Valve thinks, and it's their game, so, you know, I'll, I'll listen to them instead of you. To be fair, I got mine because I was emulating Skate 3, and I had CS open in the background, and I was using uh, cheat tables. If you ever hear a defense like that, it's bullshit. I'm fairly certain that weird vac bans like that occur, and some people that have never maliciously cheated in a multiplayer game have received a vac ban, but it's the circumstances that matter. Why did I check your profile in the first place? Why does this guy who I know to be your friend also have a vac ban? Why are you both doing so well on the scoreboard? Why do you immediately go to the mega cheater database to defend yourself? Why are you guys shitting yourselves and keep doing this nervous fake laugh? Be smart, you guys. Keep an eye out for this shit. Can everyone please vote yes? These guys yeah. both have back bands. You can go to their profiles to check. Yeah! There goes Dirk. Damn, bro. Whole TFT player base is a hard mind. Whole TFT player base is a What the heck? Okay, is it just a coincidence that I wanted to go check your profile and you just happen to have a VAC band too? Like, Yes, it is, because you have no legitimate evidence that I'm cheating, and you're just assuming that I'm cheating based off of a back I wouldn't have even found out about the back man if I hadn't suspected you in the first place. Good point. I have no argument against If you have a back man, great, he's gone. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I love that one. Always be sure to thank your team whenever you manage to purge a scum like that from your match, okay? But let's real quick observe what I think is fair to call the bad ending of a similar situation. Here's a Force of Nature scout with some blatant aimbot. As I'm watching him, he engages in some banter with another member of the team who's been voice chatting for a good portion of the game. So do you think like, like estrogen or something, or is it just like natural voice? Oh, okay. I guess he answered my question. Yeah, um, estrogen doesn't take change your voice. Why would you put nitrogen in your bloodstream? Now, this person, Zof the Loaf, who is not cheating, by the way, could be considered obnoxious. Ouchie, the sniper. You don't have to say it like that, Zof. Because of this, our cheater doesn't like them very much and finds reason to kick them. And perhaps this person was annoying everyone else on the team enough for them to bother pressing F1 and they get kicked. Libby, this sounds familiar. Natural selection game. Yeah, honestly, you're like skin coming my sexuality. Okay. You're just making me want to kill myself. I like 100% guarantee it's because that person was trans. Through this exchange, as well as an interaction in chat, I take notice of another player and decide to start watching him. I already know that Libby is cheating, but if there are others, I need to know that before making any callouts. And within just seconds of watching this dude, it was apparent that he had on a pretty blatant aimbot. So blatant, in fact, that I think if anyone on this team is in their right mind, they should be able to see it and will agree to kick him. I tell my henchmen to call the vote, and this exchange occurs. What is he doing? He's blatantly Auto cheating. Auto-tracking? How am I blatantly cheating, man? He's using Tommy's- I know that you're way. cheating too, dipshit. Get the fuck out of here. I think you're just mad because you're, com you're compensating for life. Okay, okay. So he used to play Fortnite, dog. Okay, yeah, you guys are dumbasses. He low life played Fortnite so much he can't swap off the low, the, the like, um, he can't swap back on to low sensitivity. It's like a mental disorder for this dumbass. What the fuck are you like saying? Are you, are you schizophrenic? <laughs> schizophrenia? Are you schizophrenic? 
I think you're mental retardia. I think you should do a better job of hiding your blatant aimbot in this shitty 15 year old video game. I think, I think you should lick my tip. Okay. Yeah, feel free to spit on it. I could not tell you in a million years the reason as to why we didn't end up kicking this lowlife. Our teammates couldn't possibly be that ignorant. Maybe they were all cheaters too? I didn't see anyone else in the match on either of these guys' friends list. But hey, at least I... <laughs> At least I've got nerd sauce here to back me up. So like when you said that, that kind of turned me on a little bit. Okay, um, not that helpful. Funny, but not that helpful. I'm gonna more or less skip the rest of this clip because it doesn't really teach us anything. It just fucking defies all logic. Makes no goddamn sense. Maybe this was an HVH match and we had no business of being here in the first place? Why do they choose to kick nerd sauce instead of me? Why does our team go through with it? Why do they not go through with kicking the actual cheaters? I don't know, it's it's just so confusing and annoying. Let's move on. Here we have a cheater with a somewhat insensitive name and a somewhat vulgar profile pic. Because of this, I go to check his profile before the round even starts, which turns up some decent evidence. A game ban, 100% achievements in TF2, CSGO player, racist weapon name, and he headshots me the instant the round starts. Yeah, this dude's a cheater. This is typically where I'd go about the usual callout strat, point out the sussy activity to the enemy team in chat and hope for the best, but it wasn't really up to me this time. Let me introduce you to my best friend, Genki. Genki goes about things like this in a considerably different manner than I do. When I find a cheater in my game, the ultimate goal immediately becomes to remove them from the match. For Genki, the ultimate goal is to just make them feel like utter shit. He'll belittle them, he'll insult them, he'll kill them and taunt on them. If someone is bad at hiding their cheats, Genki will make fun of them for it. If a cheater dies to a legit player, Genki will make fun of them for it. Any little thing that they do, Genki will criticize in the most toxic way he can, which is awesome. Let's take a look at what Genki said to this specific cheater. That's crazy. Why isn't the NN on Soldier? For reference, NN is an acronym that specifically cheaters use to refer to other cheaters as a no-name. A loser. Unremarkable. I think this pretty much applies to all of them, so it's a good insult to use against any cheater. They're all NNs. The cheater finds this remark very, very amusing for some reason, and about a minute later, the guy gets a kill on Genki and types a 1 in chat. See, I told you, this is the shit they do. Wait a minute, does he think that Genki is cheating? Hold on, what the fuck? Is Genki a secret genius? Saying something coded that a cheater would say to another cheater to convince this guy that he is also a cheater, making him reveal himself as a cheater by communicating back in this unusual coded cheater language? That's pretty cool. Or it would be pretty cool if anyone else in the match understood the meaning behind this shit. But hey, now all of you guys do, but that means it's not coded anymore, and they'll have to start using something else. The alphabet? A cheater kills another cheater and types A in chat? Fuck it, Roman numerals maybe. Anyway, Genki responds to this by saying, Good job, Skid. That's sarcasm in case you couldn't pick up on it. And Skid is an insult. It's short for script kitty, which is just like a term to belittle cheaters. You call someone a hacker and they're all like, yeah, look at me, I'm a, a hacker, a cool hacker guy, mmm, yeah. But you call someone a script kitty and yeah, it's like calling a member of the Coast Guard a puddle pirate, you know? Love you, mom. Cheater responds with an unfunny bind, Genki responds with more sarcasm, while my other friend Scotter tries to actually make a coherent call out that normal players can understand. Genki says, how much was your Nullcore? Nullcore being the name of a cheating software. Cheater plays dumb, Genki makes fun of him for dying to a legit player, blah blah blah, he gets kicked next round, you get the idea. Why am I showing you all this? Is any of it important? Well, kinda, but let's move on for now. This next one is so... Mm, it's the hardest match. There is a player on my team with a back band and he's friends with two other players in the match that both have game bans. So first off, I fucking hate this map. Fuck Harvest, shit sucks. Additionally, there are three people on my team of nine people that I do believe to be cheating. On top of that, I'm kind of alone. I got nerd sauce in a call with me, but I have no friends joining me in this match. So I am completely out of my element in this scenario, but I still want to serve justice to these three sussy individuals. So what do I do? Well, what I did was I tried to make friends. I would talk in voice chat to legit players in the server, be friendly to them, ask them how they're doing. Oh, a bot join? Let everyone know in voice chat so we can get them out of here. They're gonna love me for that. So that's what I did. Made sure people could hear me, got them to acknowledge me, to a point where I had a nice number of players on my side, without them even realizing that there are sides to pick. I was ready to make the call out. I had it all planned out in my head, and it was gonna go something like this. Did you do it? Tim? 
Did you do it? No, I didn't do it. I can't now. It's gonna have to be you. What? No way, man. Listen to me. I'm on cooldown from the bot. You'll have about a 20 second lead. They've got me in the spawn room and they're going to kick me. Nerd sauce, do it now! Son do it! Bitch. Do hey. it! Kick him! Kick him fast! Do it, Nerd sauce! Do Just what the hell was that exactly? You might want to hold off. Yeah? Why? Because our team is going to kick you. One VAC ban on record. 1,741 days since last ban. Yeah. Um... <laughs> However, what ended up happening was they all just requeued and left the match. I know, very anticlimactic, but that's just a very extreme example of the precautions you have to take when making a callout. When the odds are stacked against you, be careful. Don't leave anything up to chance. Now, before I show you this next clip, I have to let you guys know something. I am prejudiced. Now, you might be thinking, what the fuck does that mean? Are you racist? Who are you prejudiced towards? I am prejudiced towards protogens. If you don't know what that is, protogens are like this weird subclass of furries. You know when you run into one of your pals at a furcon and you're all like, oh shit dude, I didn't know you were a furry, what's your fursona? And they'll usually answer something like a fox or a cat or a mouse or like an actual real life animal that exists that they've just anthropomorphized. Well some people might answer protogen which are like these robot cyborg dog human hybrids. Now furries in TF2 are a dime a dozen, let me tell you. I run into at least 31 furries every day that I play TF2. But when I see a protogen, it puts a bad taste in my mouth. Not because I have some sort of discriminatory dislike towards them, but just because I have run into way too many cheating protogens. In fact, that story I brought up earlier about the cheating 2-4 engineer that my team refused to kick was a protogen. So whenever I see one, I just check their profile and keep an eye on them, that's all. Not saying you should do that too, because it feels wrong to suggest that you should adopt the same prejudice as me, but if you do, just leave Kuro alone. He's my friend and I'm pretty sure he's legit. Anyway, here's the clip. I press tab and see three protogens? This little piggy has a game ban. This little piggy brags about being an HVH god on his profile, and this little piggy is friends with both of them. So immediately I knew we were dealing with a three stack. But that's alright, because if you look, I'm also part of a 3 stack. However, I'm paranoid as shit and think that it could be more than a 3 stack. One of the cheaters is named 2-4 Bombing Femboy. This guy also has Femboy in his name. Is he implicated in this? These guys both have kill streaks and are doing considerably well. Maybe they're included too and it's a 6 stack? But let me be very clear in saying that by the end of it, the only people that I think are cheating in this match are these three protogens. But because I was so paranoid in the moment, I let the match go on, which resulted in actual legit teammates leaving that otherwise would have helped boot out the cheaters. Which sucked, because eventually we found ourselves on a team with just the three of us, three cheaters, and two people I was worried might be friends with the cheaters. Right? Because this guy, Demo Man, was doing really, really well and had a really high kill streak. So obviously he's an experienced player that's good at the game, which is why I just couldn't fathom the possibility of this person not being a cheater themselves or implicated with the cheaters. Because in my mind, he would see it too, clear as day, that these three are blatant cheaters and that he would want to do something about it just like me. But instead, he just kept playing while somehow outscoring the cheaters. Eventually, the match filled back up and we felt confident enough to start kicking the protogen cheaters one by one. <laughs> Let's go! Here we have Sonic Forever playing Spy. His aim is snapping to enemies with a diamond back. He's bee hopping around, getting quirky backstabs. He's your textbook blatant cheater. We end up losing this round because our team sucks, which is something that Sonic Forever is eager to point out. Where is my team? To which I respond, why should you need a team when you have aimbot? And Genki backs me up in chat. We're not NN skids like you. The cheater plays dumb, and then we get to see Genki go to work in voice chat. No, you don't speak incel yet. You play this shitty game and have unusuals on it and you cheat. You're a fucking loser. So yeah, he's cheating. Can you please get on a mic and say something? I know, like, yeah, I know you have a mic. You're not that poor, right? Or did, like, no core cost that much money? 
And that's really it for this section of the video too. That should cover just about everything you'll need to know and more when calling out a cheater. By the end of it, if you're on the cheater's team, 9 times out of 10, someone will have been kicked. Ideally it's the cheater, but maybe it's you or your friends. If the cheater's on the enemy team, ideally you can convince the enemy team to kick the cheater. But if not, you're not really at risk of getting kicked. You are, however, at risk of being ignored, which is almost just as infuriating. You're also at risk of being told that you're wrong, even if you're absolutely positive that you're not which I think is way more infuriating when it's from a legit player. I will never understand the need that some people feel to defend a random person in their match from accusations without even bothering to look into it even a little bit. I'm sorry, but once again, I don't have footage of this story I'm gonna tell you. I was playing on 2-4, and the enemy team had a cheater, and it was so fucking blatant. Everyone on our team was calling it out, but the enemy team was just not reciprocating. And one of the only guys on their team that was typing in chat was just so vehemently defending the cheater. Oh, he's cheating? What's he doing? He's fucking snapping to people with aimbot and he gets a shit ton of crits? It's so obvious. Uh, I don't know man, I don't see it. Fuck off. But the funniest part was that not much later, this dude got auto-balanced to our team, and within just minutes of playing after switching sides, he was like, All right, maybe I was wrong. It really does seem like he's cheating. And oh my god, I got so fucking pissed. I was yelling at him in voice chat like, Oh yeah? You think so? Maybe you should have fucking listened to us and kicked him while you had the chance. I was a little mean. Now we saw a little bit of that earlier, getting ignored on Upward and getting denied on Badlands. But King of the Hill is a pretty short game mode and we were getting rolled on Upward, meaning I never got the chance to move into step 5. For normal people, step 5 would just be to give up, leave the match with your dignity and find a new game. Which is honestly what you should do. If every legit player in the match leaves, the cheaters are just left alone in a sad empty lobby, and then they get reminded of their parents leaving and their depressing childhood and you win the interaction. But that's not typically what I do, that's too easy. I play the long game. What is the long game? Well, if I had to describe it, it's where you sort of just sit in the rotting corpse of a match that has been ruined by a cheater that doesn't look like they'll be getting kicked anytime soon. Just insulting them and waiting for something to happen that can turn things around. Now what exactly are you waiting for? It depends on the circumstances. Some things that may be helpful to you in one situation may be a bad thing or have no effect in a different situation. For example, auto balance. Everyone fucking hates auto balance, but it really shines in certain scenarios with cheaters. If the enemy team has a cheater, but his team is ignorant and won't pay you any attention no matter what you say say in chat, getting auto balance can be a good thing. Now that you're on the cheater's team, you can communicate through voice chat and call a vote, which is bound to draw more attention and have better results than shouting at a brick wall in text chat. You could also just wait for a competent looking player to join the enemy team that actually has potential to listen to you and to hear you out, but that's rarely an opportunity. However, if you're playing against a team of multiple cheaters and you get auto balance, that complicates things and you're likely going to get voted out if you try anything. But one of the cheaters gets auto balance to your side and it's game over. You just got to kick one of them and they'll all leave as long as they're partied together. You'll even be positively contributing to this method if you just leave the game, as that makes it more likely for a cheater to be auto-balanced. I don't think I've mentioned this yet, but it's important to keep your team in the loop. If you know that an enemy is cheating, Try to make it known to your entire team if the callout doesn't go your way. This way, you'll get more people making a fuss about it in chat, making it more likely for the other team to pick up on it. And if anyone on your team gets auto-balanced to the cheater's team, they'll know to kick. And if the cheater gets auto-balanced to your team, the kick on them can be as swift as possible. So that's one of the things you're waiting for during the long game. Any sort of auto-balance, really. Now, there is a sort of mildly ethical discussion that could be had about this next thing I'm about to bring up, but in an attempt to avoid all that, I'm just gonna say that I am not suggesting that you do this. I'm just saying that I sometimes do this when I can, and that you can do this too if you want. If I am in a long game type situation, and I get either a bot or a cheater that joins my team, I will advocate for us to keep it so that we can negotiate with the enemy team, right? Because let's say that you're getting ignored or told that you're wrong. A bot or a blatant cheater is going to grab the attention of the enemy pretty fast. They're going to take the chat and say, Oh my god, red team, kick your bot slash hacker! To which I would respond, We'll kick ours if you kick yours. They'll probably react negatively to this, but they might say, oh shit, I didn't know we had one, who is it? And in that case, you can get it sorted out pretty easily, but they also might respond with something like, fuck you, our guy isn't cheating, or 
hell no, how do we know you'll kick yours? To which I would respond, all right, suit yourself, and then just keep the bot or cheater, causing the entire server to just devolve into this weird guerrilla warfare zone where everyone feels like they're committing the video game equivalent of a justifiable war crime until someone is able to make something happen. In the event that you're up against a team of cheaters, I would recommend against doing this, since it won't really help you negotiate and kicking your bot or cheater leaves more room for an enemy cheater to get auto-balanced. Playing the long game is an exhausting experience. So I'm only going to show you one video example I have of it. Nerdsauce and I join a game of Swegen that is already coming to an end. But I start recording because I notice that a demo man on the enemy team is cheating. And by the end of the game, I realize that our top player is a cheating sniper. But the game was over and there was nothing I could do about it. Coincidentally, the very next game we queued into had the exact same person. And even more coincidentally, it also had someone on my friends list. Waifu, someone who used to be a pretty active member in my Discord server. In an attempt to get ahead of this whole cheater situation, I greet Waifu and tell him straight away that his teammate is cheating. And he's like, alright, I'll kick him no problem. But when he tries to, it doesn't work. Knowing that there's not much we can do, we enter the long game and sort of just play on, trying to make the best out of the match. As time goes on, Nerd Sauce goes AFK and gets auto-kicked, and more people on our team start to call out the cheater. Waifu tries to kick him a handful of times throughout the match, none of them succeeding. Eventually, someone that isn't Waifu or the cheater speaks up in chat, saying he looks legit, just spectated him. Now, at the time, I didn't know this, but this dude also turned out to be a cheater and went full blatant before the end of the match, which is why he was defending the main cheater. But in the moment, I just assumed that maybe he toggled his cheats or toned them down, which I expressed in chat. Next round, I point out that he has multiple comments on his profile calling him out as a cheater, but nothing happens. It's in this round that me and my team start to realize that Warp is also a cheater and everything starts making more sense. I keep powering through this miserable match and eventually we push the card to the second cap. Up to this point, both Warp and Darkness have been doing at least the bare minimum to avoid being considered fully blatant cheaters. But around this time, they both just went sniper and made me start to question my existence. I briefly resort to the Genki strategy and bully them in chat, trying to get them to regret their purchase on whatever shitty cheating software they have. But let me advise you on this real quick. If you ever do this, you cannot let them get under your skin. Try your absolute best to piss them off. But whatever you do, never ever let them piss you off. Just remember to keep telling yourself that it's a game, the long game, and none of it really matters. Anyway, our team starts speculating about how many cheaters there really are. No one really knows, but it's at least two. Nothing eventful really happens for the rest of the game and we lose. Usually when I play TF2, I always leave and re queue from a match when it ends because I like to play with and against new people. But when I'm playing the long game, I stick around as long as the cheater does to see if I can serve justice. And it looks like this time, they did. Fortunately, I didn't have to wait long. To you, what I'm about to show you is just a video. But to me, it's one of the most satisfying experiences I've ever had with this game. Hey, dumbass. Hey. He's cheating. F1. False vote. False ass vote. False ass vote. The game just started. False ass vote. False ass vote. False ass vote. <laughs> False ass Let's vote. go. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. And that was that. And... I believe that's everything. Yeah, I mean, I have nothing left to say on this topic. This is gonna be a short outro. Please don't click off. Listen to me, please. Obviously, this is a very long video, so I'd like to sincerely thank you for watching the whole thing. Hopefully, now that I've completed this behemoth of a project, this channel will pick up the pace and uploads again. But if not, that's all right, no one cares. Large thank you to all my friends that were in this video for playing with me and being funny. Large fuck you to all the cheaters in this video for choosing to continue breathing. And extra large thank you to Yucky Oni for doing the artwork in the thumbnail. They've done some artwork for my videos in the past. They're a fantastic artist. Check them out on social media, it's linked. Uh, I mean, I suck at wrapping up long videos like this, so... Bye. <laughs>